Hi, blockchain and cryptography enthusiasts. Welcome to ZK Marek, where I explain all things crypto. Before we dive in, we want to thank the Ethereum Ecosystem Support Program and VLayer for their invaluable support in making this video. In the previous episode, we laid out how the trusted setup is constructed out of secret random numbers generated by each participant. To quickly recap, each participant in the trusted setup generates their own secret random number, which together forms a collective secret known as Tau. The only thing known to all of them is the sequence of powers of Tau encrypted by the generator point G in the form of elliptic curve points. Thanks to that, we can calculate the value of the polynomial at tau encrypted by multiplication by g. We also covered the concept of pairings, which imitate multiplication of elliptic curve points. The pairing operation is bilinear, meaning it allows us to prove and verify certain identities by leveraging the property that a scalar can be moved between the arguments. In this episode, we'll take a look at polynomial commitments. So let's start by refreshing the concept of polynomials. At its core, the polynomial of degree n is a mathematical expression consisting of variables raised to different powers, multiplied by coefficients, combined using addition. In cryptography, polynomials allow us to represent sets of points in a structured way. For instance, consider the points 0, 30, 1, 9, 2, negative 4, 315. These can be represented as evaluations of a polynomial p of x. Given these points, we can construct the polynomial that goes through them. Assuming it's of degree 3, it's going to be of this form. Another way to represent a polynomial is by expressing it in terms of its roots, the values of x, where the polynomial evaluates to 0. For example, if p of x has roots at 1.5, 2.5, and negative 2, it can be written with this factored form. Note that a polynomial of a given degree n can be rewritten with n roots and a lead coefficient. Here's where things get interesting. In certain situations, different polynomials can yield the same output for a given input. Suppose we have two polynomials, p of x and q of x that are distinct, but at some x0, they produce the same value. So p equals q at x0. If we subtract one polynomial from another, say p minus q, the result is a new polynomial r of x. If p equals q at x0, then the polynomial r will have x0 as a root, meaning the resulting polynomial is 0 at x0. And just as we mentioned before, we could write the polynomial r in terms of all of its roots, so as a multiplication like this. If we were to go into more details, we could say that the polynomial r is divisible by these linear factors corresponding to each root. Of course, in cryptography, we work in finite fields, particularly prime fields fp, where p is a prime number. In this context, all operations on the polynomial's values are done modulo p. Modulo operations are done here on integers, so let us see how it's constructed in the field f41. For the input 0, the polynomial has the value 30, which modulo 41 is 30. p of 2 is negative 4, so in a finite field it'll be 37. The calculations are later conducted in the same manner. It's worth noting then that the highest value of the polynomial in this representation is 40, or in general, p minus 1. A friendly reminder that in cryptographic applications, it's more common to work with fields of much bigger order, closer to 2 to the power of 256. So, let's talk about the commitment schemes. In this process, the committer has a polynomial, which he doesn't want to reveal, but wants to prove to the verifier that it has specific values. The committer is locked into the polynomial via something called a commitment, which acts like a locked box containing information about the polynomial. The commitment is sent, and upon request, the committer provides an evaluation of the polynomial at specific point x0. Additionally, he provides the proof, which will allow the verifier to authenticate the opening.
Let's see how it works in the case of the KZG commitment scheme. Using the trusted setup, the committer calculates the encrypted value of the polynomial at tau. This elliptic curve point is a commitment, which the committer sends to the verifier. He can ask the committer to open the commitment, and as a reply, he sends a value of y0, which is the evaluation of the polynomial at requested point x0, and a proof, so an elliptic curve point, encrypted value of the polynomial at tau. So what is this proof? The crucial part of this whole scheme is opening the commitment, so revealing the value y0 at some point x0 of the polynomial p. So p of x0 minus y0 is 0. Now, here's a trick. Let's introduce a new polynomial r of x, defined as a polynomial p of x minus y0. If we were to construct this polynomial graphically, we would take all of the points and translate them vertically by y0. Keep in mind that the calculations are done in the prime field. Hence, the operation of modulo. Here, the polynomial knowledge comes in handy. This new r of x has a root at x0. And we mentioned earlier that it is possible to write a polynomial in terms of its roots, like this. So, if the opening is correct, the equation below has to be true. And therefore, there exists a quotient polynomial, which is the result of division r of x over x minus x0. This way, the commuter can easily calculate the quotient. But, how does that help us with the verification of the whole process? Let's look at it all for one last time. We have the committer, who wants to keep the polynomial hidden, so he sends just an encrypted evaluation of it to the verifier. The verifier then asks for the value of the polynomial for a specific x0 to verify that it belongs to it. and. With the evaluation, the committer sends a proof, which is an encrypted value of the quotient polynomial at tau. To verify the proof, the verifier compares two pairings. On both sides, there are values that are known to him. The first argument on the left is the proof and a point on an elliptic curve, tau minus x0, evaluated using generator point g2. Of course, the verifier knows the value tau multiplied by g2, because of the trusted setup and the value x0 he proposed himself. And on the other side, in the first argument of the pairing is commitment C minus y0 multiplied by g1. Seemingly, the equation is random, but let's see what it actually represents. Knowing the definitions of commitment C and proof pi, we can break it down and get the form. The operation on the pairing is bilinear, so we can move the factor from one argument to another. So, we got something that resembles the very definition of the quotient, which was that it exists if the polynomial p of x minus y0 has a root at x0. And this condition should be correct for all x, so also for tau, which is the equation we got from the pairing verification. Okay, so we know how all of this works, but how is it kept secure? Let's picture this. The committer tries to construct a fake proof, an opening, so he falsely evaluates polynomial p at x0, resulting in y1. As we recall, the verification was based on the fact that there exists a quotient polynomial that is constructed if and only if the polynomial p minus y0 has a root at x0 so can be divided without any remainder. If they try this division with a fake y1, they'll be left with a remainder, making the proof impossible to construct. All of this relies on a Q-strong Diffie-Hellman assumption that extends the traditional Diffie-Hellman one, ensuring that computing fake proofs with pairings is computationally infeasible. Thanks for watching ZK Marek channel.